every other day, like kale or spinach. Um, take a B complex because they're good for stress and they're really very healthy. And who doesn't need help with stress? Take a probiotic uh, because probiotics um, really help the gut brain axis. They help the liver work better. They help. They help a lot of things. Uh, they help heart health. You know, a lot of things. Take a quality mental health, obviously. Take a quality appropriate multivitamin for seniors, men, women, or children, whatever you are. Um, take a, I mean, for sleep also, this, there's something called a grounding blanket. Uh, they can be found on Amazon. They're pretty useful for sleep and just reducing anxiety. Just sleep well. You should avoid technology and light at night after about five. Uh, because the thing is, I don't know, Brenda, uh, do, do, do you see like a, a light box? Do you see the technology of a light box in, in the, sc- the monitor screen at all? Do you see the similarities? Yes and no. I think uh, there's definitely some, some similarities. Um, I think definitely that's something that I try to strive towards is avoiding that technology. I try to do about an hour, whether it's right as you wake up, leave an hour right before to try to do some just natural pathways and then an hour before bed. So whether I'm reading, meditating, stretching, a lot of these uh, opportunities I try to do without, without viewing any technology to allow my body to you know, adjust to start the day as well as getting prepared for sleep. That's really smart. I did not include depression on my list for my dep- uh, for the National Depression Cure, but the thing is, yeah, that's meditation can be very healing. Um, it they've even shown that um, children in I think it was Bombay, they meditated for about an hour a day, thirty minutes and thirty minutes, thirty minutes in the morning, thirty minutes at night. They healed their PTSD, some of them completely which is really quite amazing. Uh, and it's great for depression and happiness in general. So if you drink coffee, you should only drink coffee in the morning because coffee will disrupt your sleep if you drink it at any other time. Uh, and for a lot more theory, I, I exhort people to check out the, my little book, The Medical Librarian's Guide to Natural Mental Health, Anxiety, Bipolar, Depression, Schizophrenia, and Digital Addiction. Nutrition and Complementary Therapies, 4th edition, that was published in November 24th, 2017, which is available on Amazon.com exclusively. Because, I mean, the thing is, I do a deep dive into nutritional psychiatry. I feel it's the best book on the market, honestly. Um, I, I hesitate to say that because, you know, it seems kind of arrogant. But I've seen the other people's um, works and, you know, I don't know. They they lack things like be, you know, just a lot a lot of detail that is really helpful and healing in the medical librarian's guide. So, well, I'll have the link for anybody to go to Amazon to grab your book, and I think as well to see all of these natural pathways that you spoke about, those 17 points. And I think a lot of them offer a lot of great value and they covered a lot of great points in terms of physical health's ability to improve your mental health because you focus a lot on nutrition, exercise, sleep, and those are all great causes to benefit our own mental health. And just besides these opportunities to improve your mental health, which in turn benefits our mental health, what are kind of some other ways, you know, we spoke about meditation being one way, but what are some kind of natural pathways for one to dive into different, whether it's an activity or a routine that can benefit their own mental health? Yeah, no, I mean, journaling is great. Um, I mean, the thing is, if you have a positive lifestyle, and you also structure your time well, so like, I like to be with people that I love and respect more than anything. Um, Also, I like to be um, busy just writing my my little books, um, because that way, I feel like I'm not wasting my time and I'm helping people. 
So I feel that's important to me personally. So the thing is, um, um, the man search for meaning. If you have the why, you'll find the how, right? So uh, if you if you if you have the why you want to live, you can find the how pretty easily. So um, a lot of times. So yeah, you know, like um, you have to structure time. Also, you you know, like recreation th- recreational therapists also talk about doing things that are fun and like a little bit unstructured, like going to the park or playing a sport or you know, what have you. I mean, you know, you don't want to be, you know, stuck at home all day behind a desk, looking at a computer screen on your Facebook with your 10,000 friends. That's what you want to avoid. You bring up a great point, And I think this leads right into our discussion about really childhood and age differentiation of mental health. So why don't you speak more about that in terms of what you're faced when you're younger and how this kind of generational change has offered a lot of increase within mental health conditions today? Okay, so thank you. Uh, so the thing is, we um, the, let, me, let me share like the saddest thing I saw on the subway last year. So last year I saw it was eight, I, w- I want to say like teenagers, early teenage years, right? And um, they were all hanging out together, so I was happy for them. And so I noticed how they they were, Brendan, how they were acting. Um, they were acting very distant from each other. Why? They, they were, I mean, they were obviously all together and hanging out and being social, but all eight of them were just staring deeply into their own like iPhones or Androids and. So they were together, yet they were very far apart, if that makes any sense. Um, so like technology, um, and is it good to be connected all the time, right? Like, you know, bing, 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 you know, like you get these uh, not- notifications, signals of dopamine receptor sites, and you feel good that somebody's saying hi. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're, you're just interacting with a machine, right? So... Um, when I was growing up, you know, computers were a new thing and, you know, we, we went to the park together, we played together for hours, you know, whether, whether it be American handball or basketball, or we went to the track and you ran and went to the park and had good fresh air and sun and good times, you know? And I don't think that's as, as much the case these days with the young people. I think they're just playing their Call of Duty or what have you. I don't know what the first person shooter these days is, but uh, or you know World of Warcraft or whatever, whatever's in vogue. But um, I feel it's a lost generation. These young people, in a lot of ways, they've lost, you know, the opportunity, the important developmental milestone of just hanging out with other people. And just, you know, it, you know, in an unstructured way. And, you know, it's just people need FaceTime. And I don't mean the app. FaceTime, the app, I don't like very much, <laughs> you know, um, in that way. But, um, you know, it's just, it's the saddest thing, you know, like to see the old people with a smile on their face with their walker. They're obviously in pain, but they're smiling. And I see these teenagers who have these deep invariably deep frowns and they're 13 years old. I'm like, why are you so, you know, it it kills me, you know? Definitely. I think it's tough to see when a new technology can be overtaking a, a group of, a group of people. And I definitely agree with you that relationships are so important. I think having that human connection really drives change and purpose within our own lives and something else that obviously is improved, well, necessarily increasing, I think, throughout our society is, you know, not focusing on nutrition. And I think we see a lot of these fast food chains and a lot of kind of lack of focus on nutrition. So, why don't you speak about that in terms of when you're in your early childhood, how nutrition can negatively affect the way that your mental health performs? 
Yeah, well, I mean, so for example, the the classic tale of type two diabetes, you, you know, it wasn't called type two diabetes when I was growing up. Do you do you remember what it was called? Brenda? Adult onset diabetes. But now they had to change the name to type two diabetes because so many children are becoming obese. You know, it didn't happen when I was growing up anywhere near as much. So, um, so yeah, I mean, the children are becoming really, I mean, out of shape, what have you, because of their diet, lack of exercise, and it, it's it's a maelstrom of problems, right? That feed on each other. With the obesity comes the depression, and with the depression comes more obesity. You know, it's it's like a chicken and egg thing. And it, it, it's something that is very hard to get out of. Um, it's very hard to get out of that cycle without like somebody showing you the way and yeah, making it easy for you. Like usually and in the, in the past, it was the parents a lot of time, you know, most of the time trying to help the kids. But the thing is these days, parents are, you know, usually it's both parents making a, a dollar, uh, trying to take care of their, their children. So there's nobody at home cooking for the children. So um, the children have to result, re resort, excuse me, to uh, like McDonald's or what have you, because nobody's cooking for them. And the cycle is perpetuated. Definitely. I think it's a lot of causes within your environment that can create these, these problems and these issues throughout today. I think everybody not only the parents and the children need to really focus on what's important for themselves. And I think creating these conversations, promoting health and nutrition are very important. And I think the outlets and the resources to provide to them are obviously very important as well. So if someone's listening here today and they're a child and maybe they don't know how to cook or they don't have the ability to get out there and seek friends. What is, what is your best, best advice for them? What's the first step that you were thinking within your own mind when you were struggling? What's, what's kind of one way that someone can seek out a resource to, to better themselves, whether they're struggling with schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, Mm -hmm. uh if if you're a child listening to this podcast god bless you it's an adult conversation and uh, i'm sorry you're listening to this very serious topic i'm hoping you, you heal if you're suffering um but i i recommend to you child to just go for a walk if you can twice a day long to uh, maybe an hour each time long brisk walks uh if you don't have a gym available comfortable shoes, stretch, um, and eat, a, eat a, you know, try to eat as many carrot, you know, like, um, vegetables and fruit as you can fit that into your diet, you know, because it's really important, you know, like you, you need fruits, fruit and vegetables, no matter what you eat, you need fruits and vegetables. Um, if you still have to eat McDonald's, I'm sorry, but maybe that's what you have to do. Um, Try to, if you're going to eat, you know, like try to go whole grains, fruits and vegetables, you know, uh, try to go to the park, play with your, try to make some friends at the park, you know, because, you know, long term, it's going to be really good for you. Even short term, you'll feel better. You'll have a good time. <laughs> you'll have a great time. You'll make friends, you know, so go to the park. That's great, William. Thank you. And I, I think there are, a lot of great opportunities for people to seek out. A lot of it is just creating that perspective change that you need to do it. And I think that's why technology does overcome a lot of people today is it's because it's that easy source of happiness for a lot of people, um, which is definitely unfortunate, but hopefully we can, we can change the perspective and opportunities for, for the youth today. And I think it's been great that you've been writing so much and you've provided a lot of great insight for other people. So what's kind of one 
one lesson that you've learned throughout writing this because you clearly have a very passionate approach 